Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the Behavioral Change Program. On the last episode, we've been talking about what behavior change is, barriers to behavior change, challenges faced by youths in universities, and factors that lead to negative behavior change. We are now going to be focusing on ways to actually overcome the negative behavior change and how we are going to cope with the challenges that we face as Muslims in the society. Um, obviously, when you find an issue, one has to find ways to actually address the issue or you either find a solution. So, so far we've been discussing the issues. We've been discussing what the issue is and the negative impact of the issues, how it's affecting us as humans, as youths, as people. So right now we're going to be discussing on ways to overcome the challenges and also address the negative behavior change because it's not something we want to be dealing with on a daily basis. So one of the ways to actually overcome the challenge of um, the challenges that are being faced by Muslim youths in the universities at large is time management. Yeah. So we found that one of the challenges was being able to go for like your Friday prayers or going to the mosque since the classes overlap. The mosque is far, the classes overlap, you live far from a mosque, yeah? So, when you actually manage your time in that, I will actually leave the house by this time, or I can only attend this Friday class for maybe just an hour. It's going to be giving me like maybe 10 minutes for me to reach the mosque and listen to the Friday khutbah and pray on time. No dilly darling in between. You manage your time, you plan your schedule well to actually give you like the best results in a day. Because when you waste your time, you'll not be able to achieve certain things. So by managing your time, planning your schedule with what you have and to get the best of everything, is actually a very good way to overcome that challenge of mosques being far, prayer rooms being small, classes overlapping with my Friday prayer. Yeah. And another one is communicating your needs. Okay? So we live in a diversified country, yeah? My needs are not the same as another person's needs. My needs as a Muslim may not be the same with another person's needs in another religion. My needs are, when it's prayer time, I have to have access to a place that I can actually pray at that particular time. Unless, otherwise, am I allowed to actually not pray on time. But my need states that. Now the person that has not actually grown in a Muslim area or is not a Muslim, you cannot expect that person to know this. So by communicating your needs, you can let that person know that this is what I need. How can we actually make this beneficial to the both of us? In that I want to gain knowledge and at the same time I want to practice my deen to the best. How are you going to help us? If uh, the people that actually do the scheduling of timetables or maybe the, act, the ones that actually are in the administration of the schools can maybe provide an area, a bigger area for you guys to pray, it's okay. But by communicating your needs is when you guys are going to find a solution on what can actually be a way for you guys to overcome that challenge, yeah? If you do not communicate your needs, 
they won't know that you're actually suffering. So I advise the people to actually communicate their needs. To communicate your needs in a calm manner, following the rules of the schools that you're in. And if they're not able to like give you this, then ask what alternative can you give us? Will I be excused in class? Like the lecturers should be let known that all Muslim students at this time, if they want to go to prayer at the mosque, they are allowed to live in between lecturers without an issue. And in case of maybe assignments or maybe a discussion that is given at that time that needs to be returned back to the teachers and lecturers, they have to, the students have to follow up later and they should be allowed to follow up later after their prayers. So it's communication. When you tell them what you need, you, then you come and like find ways to actually address the issue that you're going through. Another one is family support. Family support is actually very substantial and very important in someone's life. Since they are the people that you have grown up seeing, they affect your behavior. They are the ones that actually affect your personality development. Yeah? Someone's personality usually comes from when you're born, like how you're treated when you're born, what are the things that you've been going through, progressing, what have you been going through when you're an infant, what are you used to when you're in nursery school, primary school, high school, university. And all this usually happens when we are in the confines of our family most of the time. We might go outside, obviously, in the society, but then you come back to your family. It does not have to be biological family, just family. So having your family support in your issues, in that when you're going through something, you can address it. If uh, you're having issues in your family, you can address the issues. If uh, you're having problems, you can go back to your family and actually discuss them. Positive attitude in a family really helps someone's behavior and also someone's output to bring out the best in themselves. Family takes a huge role in making someone how they are. So family support is very important. And uh, seeking religious knowledge. In that, when you have religious knowledge, like when you actually know your dean, when you know what is right, what is permissible for you to do, what is not permissible for you to do, no one will come and tell you like, this is, what you, this is okay for you to do. You're going to be like, no, I know, I have learned, this is how it's supposed to be. You cannot tell me to do this. And what I've learned is my religion does not allow me to do this. Your morals do not allow you to do this. So your behavior will not be affected to the negative side because you have knowledge about your religion and you follow what your religion entails on what you're supposed to be doing. Seeking religious knowledge is very important. You cannot be like a scholar of like all aspects of knowledge but try to seek knowledge on the basics of knowledge, on the basics of your everyday life, how you're supposed to conduct your everyday life, what is expected of you as a Muslim, what you're required to do as a Muslim. When you actually seek knowledge on these matters, religious knowledge on these matters, it is very hard for you to be swayed. You're going to be assertive and you're going to stick on what you believe and actually do what you want to do. Another way is on being assertive, yeah? When you're being assertive, you focus. Like, you're that type of person that if this is what you believe is right, unless someone can like actually provide like very high factual knowledge or very high factual information, when like maybe there's a better way 
to do this or maybe um, you're lacking a bit in what you're doing that is when you can actually move but being assertive means you stick to the decision that you've made let's try to be assertive in our decisions and in our beliefs and also being radicalized positively in that there are a lot of things going on here yeah but when someone is positively radicalized in that as much as the mainstream is doing this but this is what you believe now you detaching from the mainstream is what being radicalized is and it's good for someone to be radicalized positively being radicalized one can be either radicalized positively or negatively so when you're radicalized positively you're able to make decisions well you're able to conform to your religion you're able to become the best version of yourself being assertive and radicalized is something one should actually strive to be and another way to actually overcome this the challenges and the negative behavior changes that we actually go through is um, seeking resources <coughs> is actually um, researching yeah yes you know that this is right you have heard that this is right but maybe there is a better way to do this or maybe there was some misinformation on your part or misinterpretation of the information that you have research these days a lot of resources are easy to access we have quran majid we have like a lot of apps we have videos on youtube we have uh, sheikhs sharing their knowledge okay you research on something you can even like talk to your next door ustad or ustada and actually research on something that you are not an expertise in as i said before we cannot be scholars of each and everything you can't be a scholar of physics at the same time a scholar of geography at the same time a scholar of hadith at the same time a scholar of fiqh at the same time a scholar of quran translation and transliteration so you should actually go and find the people that have knowledge on this expertise yeah that that are experts on something you ask you research and also be very careful when you're doing your research not to actually gain negative knowledge too so just do your research on something that you're not sure of since these days it's very easy for us to actually access the internet and get knowledge rather than having to travel <laughs> or send letters in order for someone to actually gain an answer or information about something and you will have like a lot of different aspects of things and the one that is right with you is the one that you can take another way for someone to actually overcome these challenges is seeking support apart from having family support you can actually seek support in brotherhood islam encourages about brotherhood so when you're in universities or maybe at work or anywhere else find support no man is an island in that in order for you to move it's easier for you to move alone but it's better for you to move with people okay so if uh, you want to overcome a lot of things in life you should have a support either friends family relatives at large and also when you're finding friends find good friends on the aspect of negative behavior change if your friends are not nice it's something that you can be a good person you have your dean and everything 
but maybe your friend does not conform to what you believe in it's okay but that person that same person is actually trying to make you move away from your beliefs that is not someone to actually put yourself close with the person is constantly trying to remove you from your deen you should find good friends in that when it's solar time you're like ah it's solar time we need to go and pray you're doing something wrong you don't know how to like cope with your issues and then you go for like a negative way like maybe drugs or abuse this friend is like no what you're doing is wrong you're not supposed to be doing this this is what you're supposed to be doing so good friends actually have a huge impact on our behavior and lives so when you have good friends that can actually advise you and help you to conform to your deen be a better version of yourself achieve the goals that you want to achieve it is very good for you to have good friends another way to actually overcome these challenges is by praying the best way for someone to protect themselves from a lot of things from negative behavior chains we are human we make mistakes our nafs might be weak we might be swayed but when you keep praying and constantly talking to allah waking up for tahajjud praying sunnah reading the quran following the rules of the quran following what the quran entails what you're supposed to be doing you're praying you do a lot of istighfar you like your life revolves around your deen okay you don't like deen does not come second after you as in after your other life and everything your your life revolves around your deen in that what i'm doing right now is for the sake of my deen what i'm doing right now is for the sake of allah if i don't if i do this i am sinning and cuz you have taqwa you want to be seen you want like want to see you you fear allah you don't want to do bad things okay so when you conform to your deen when you pray you wake up for tahajjud when you're going through something you tell allah ya rab i want to i want to stop doing this i am going through something i have mental health issues and maybe you've sought all types of ways to actually overcome your mental health issues and you don't have a way to actually overcome them you've tried your best you tell allah ya allah i've tried my best please ya rab then kun faya kun allah just has to say kun faya kun and all your issues are sorted and prayer is when you actually pray there's this tranquility that you feel the the issue may not be sorted immediately but the fact that you know that you have talked to allah and you know allah can like do away with your issues you feel this certain type of peace and tranquility and this actually is a way for you to actually overcome those challenges negative behavior changes mental health issues and every other sort of thing you have done a huge part of overcoming all those things okay and uh, another way is seeking psychological support psychological counseling is not something that is either may be expensive or maybe something that you do not need in your life the most expensive way for you to actually like spend your money unwisely in a way that is not wise is not taking care of your mental health and physical health in that your mental health actually leads to you not having a very good physical health so when you go in seek psychological support these are people that have been trained to actually 
know what you're going through, advise you on what you should do. They know the steps, they know the things that you're supposed to actually do if you're going through these. There are people that have specialized in this. So when you actually go for psychological counseling, you can, when you actually go for psychological counseling, you can do away with your mental health issues gradually, slowly, give yourself a chance, believe in yourself in that this is something you can overcome, then go for psychological counseling, then you can be helped. Another way is inter-religious conferences, in that Muslims and uh, other religions come together, they discuss the issues, like maybe I have a prejudice on something, I do not know, like, I thought Muslims are supposed to be like this, this is what I thought is supposed to be going on, yeah? So, with the help of inter-religious conferences, people of different religions come together, address a certain issue, clear the misconceptions. This is a very good way to actually deal with maybe Islamophobia, discrimination, and other things at large. Those are the ways for overcoming negative behavior change and the challenges that are being faced by youths in university.